Now the next thing would be uh, getting them dry enough to actually run through the mill. Mm -hmm. So that that's uh, that's its own separate thing. So after we roll them across the table here, we will then put them in an oven. Like there's that red drying oven over there. And so uh, we'll finish drying them and also roast them in that oven. We, we've determined that there's, there's some optimal you know, temperatures and times where you roast them at a certain temperature to a certain amount of time and they just taste a lot better as flour. And so we'll roast them and finish drying them in there to the point where they're dry enough to run through the flour mill. And the flour mill is here, and this is our small, modest flour mill. Um, and uh, if, if we were to you know, become more commercial with this flour process, we would definitely uh, partner with another mill, like, like a, a co-packer, uh, because you know we don't have the capacity to do a whole lot of volume here. You know, we're, we're looking at like 25 pounds at a time. You know, so um, if we were getting into the hundreds of pounds, you know, a day type of thing, we would we would need a co-packer or a, a, a bigger flour mill. Um, do you want to add to any of this? I could uh, throw some nuts in the mill and we could see how that works too. You want to grind some? Well, I've got some. We can do a little demonstration. All right, and then, and then give me a time limit <laughs> <There you go. laughs> first, <laughs> and then uh, I'll fill in some blanks. All right. Well, I'm just going to grind a few just so you can see how this works, and um, yeah, and then and then that'll then we'll be back to eating chestnuts. <laughs> Before she grinds, this mill was not bought to make flour. We bought this mill when we had a research grant and we were studying post-harvest changes in chestnuts. So we bought this just to prepare samples for chemical analysis. And that's what this mill is made for, for grinding any kind of plant material to do chemical analysis of any kind. And so we just use it as flour because we have it not because this is the best kind of mill to use or one that is even a good mill to use but it, it's an adequate mill to use for the scale we're at and as amy says what at least at the moment we don't want to become flour millers we want to be chestnut growers and send yeah. the chestnuts maybe the dried kernels to somebody else to do the mill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as part of this partnership with the Rural Action uh, SARE grant, we are connecting with some of those other mills who would be interested yeah. in working with us. So it's been good to make those connections and those partnerships and actually so, see the flour milled in a more professional manner, like a higher capacity sort of thing. You know, what I learned from the people who, you know, you think with the last name of Miller, I'd know more about it than I do. <laughs> but milling flour of any kind is way more complicated than I ever thought it was. <laughs> yeah. There are lots of different ways to reduce the size and each different kind of mill, whether it's a roller mill or a hammer mill or a cutting mill like this or a stone mill, a grist mill, those all result in different shaped pieces of flour if you look at them under the microscope and then those behave differently in cooking. And so there's a lot of variables that contribute to the quality of what you just tasted and one of them is the kind of mill not just the size that they end up so this is ends up with a certain quality that may be better or worse than chestnut flour from another kind of mill. Before I put these in here I'll just let you see well these are some of the minis so they're, they're tiny little kernels and um, you know you can see some of them like they're for the most part they're really good there's Maybe if they have like one black spot on them that doesn't affect the flavor, we could put them in the flour. But these these minis are the ones that we we like to use to make flour because they're they're good quality and they don't have a lot of value in the fresh market. Yeah. So they were second quality until we put them until we graded them out to put it in that bag. Now they're first quality. <laughs> yeah. So what percentage of your harvest are good minis? What do you think? Oh, that's very yeah, it varies. So yeah. We uh, maybe do at, at the most 5% of our crop ends up being peeled. Uh, the cull rate really depends on the thing that varies the most from year to year is blossom end rot, which Amy's working on her PhD studying. Uh, some years we have 5% that we have to discard because they're black on the end, and some years it's 30%. So 
that coal rate has a big effect on how many nuts get put in here. But if they're if their blossom end rotted very bad, they get thrown out, but they don't en end up in the flower either. Mm -hmm. so. so I I think my question is like when you <clears throat> make chunks using that mill, mm -hmm. the chunks are much smaller than the minis, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So um, and maybe the minis would make chunks faster than the bigger ones. Uh, it, it really so the the chunk size is all dependent on the screen that's in the mill, and right. it. I don't think it matters necessarily what pe what size you start with. No, yeah. it doesn't care. Yeah. It isn't, yeah. Yeah. And if you're making chunks, they go through really fast. Mm -hmm. The flour takes time. Yeah. Oh, let's right. pour a little right. bit That's in so we can see how it works. And, yeah. Yeah. When we brought this I think um, maybe we can get some ice cream and, uh, and uh, Greg, Greg can talk a little bit more about what we've seen. Yeah.